Welcome to the Bible Momming Podcast, where we are parenting by the book. I am your host, Paula Whitten. This podcast is for women who struggle with regular mom stuff, but also long to have their kids grow closer to Christ. It's a lifetime journey, and we're in it together. As a real mom, you just never know where I'll be podcasting from, but I'll always be available for you. Now let's get started. Hi, mamas. I'm coming to you today from my desk here in my home office. And if you hear any pounding in the background or whatever, it seems like all my neighbors are working on projects. I have my handy cup of tea in this beautiful mug a friend of mine got me for my birthday. I had a birthday just last month, and this mug has Bible momming written on it, and she did our, the logo and everything. She she used, I guess, a cry cut to make it, and it's just so beautiful, and it's my new, it's my new favorite mug, so I have it here with my tea. As I am sitting down getting ready to spend wonderful time with you, I'm so excited. Now, today I want to encourage you as you listen to the podcast, make sure that after you listen, you leave a review on whatever venue you're on because uh, ratings and reviews are huge. Just, you know, click a few stars or whatever it is. I, I, I love five stars. Those are my favorite. I won't lie. But do whatever you feel is appropriate because I would love to hear what you think of the podcast. Just letting you guys know also, I am in the process of creating a Udemy class for people who want to learn about how to read the Bible. So that will be coming very soon. I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek and information. I will tell you more as it gets closer. Now, do you have questions about the Bible or marriage or even prayer? You can contact me at BibleMomming.com slash contact. I would love to hear your questions and then... I'll be answering them at one of our monthly Bible momming chats. They're the first week of the month, and you can get all the details by joining the Facebook Bible momming group or joining the newsletter on BibleMomming.com. If you scroll down on that homepage, it's at the very bottom. Just give me your email and stuff, and then I will send you information. Today, I am talking with singer-songwriter Mandy Pinto. She is the mom of two wonderful daughters and an extraordinary worship leader, singer-songwriter, The Works. We will be talking about her newest album, Hold My Everything, as well as what is going on with her family while she created and released it. And we are dealing with cancer here, people. Mandy heard the call to ministry through music and set out to sing at churches throughout the United States. God has given her incredible skill, and she has been able to perform at churches and other venues all over the United States. She has also independently recorded and released eight solo albums in the last 26 years. Mandy is an accomplished songwriter with several of her songs winning notable awards in the Billboard Song Contest and the John Lennon Songwriting Contest. Mandy has recorded for Nintendo, Namco, Toyota, Disney, and the theme song from Miss Spider on Nickelodeon, if you are familiar. She attends and serves as a worship leader at Shepherd Church in Porter Ranch, California. When she's not serving at Shepherd Church, Mandy leads worship and or performs at churches and conference centers across the country weekly. She recently released her latest album called Hold My Everything, and in the midst of prepping and releasing this project, her daughter Bridget was diagnosed with brain cancer. You will want to stick around and hear Mandy's story, which is so amazing, and I had to give it so much time because... I just love her story. She gets two episodes, peeps. She is, yeah, I said peeps. She is going to uh, talk to us about the reality of what it is to be a mom who loves Jesus, whose daughter has brain cancer. And I just encourage you, if you have ever wondered where God is when suffering happens, this episode is not to be missed. Hey, Mandy, I'm so glad to have you on the show today. And I want to make sure that my listeners have an idea of who you are and what you do. So I want to give a little background before we dig into an amazing experience you've been having and a way that you've been getting closer to Christ, which is quite unexpected. But before we do that, I wanted to know, um, you are a singer-songwriter who has written an immense amount of work. And and, uh, I'm curious, what was one of your favorite performing experiences? Well, Paula, thank you for having me, and I'm delighted to be here. First of all, thank you. Um, it's my pleasure. Well, one, I, of my, I love <laughs> one of my favorite experiences, I was 19, 
And I was invited to sing at a Lutheran conference for high schoolers. And it was in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was held at the Georgia Dome. And it was the most amazing experience. There was 30,000 youth. Oh, my and I was goodness. One of the- <laughs> yes. And I was one of the worship leaders there. And um, it was an incredible experience. We had the Georgia Mass Choir come and sing. And, um, you know, I mean, they are such an elite, powerful group of men and women. And um, they were coming in. And, you know, being from California, um, I re- I'm, I'm not naive. I'm not ignorant to the fact that obviously we still struggle with diversity and unity. Um, and so, but in Atlanta at the time, and this is a while back, and mm-hmm. they, they, it was a big deal for the choir to ask somebody, especially of a different color, to come and sing with them. And they had heard me in a sound check and asked me if I would sing with them. Oh, on a song. oh that just yeah. touches your heart. So, so, oh my goodness. So, and I had no idea, you know, being, again, being from California, we're very obviously diverse states. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, my church is full of every ethnicity known to man. So I didn't even give it a second thought, but, and even at the time didn't even give it a second thought, but so many people came up to me afterwards and said, do you know how monumental that was? I said, well, yes, I just sang with the Georgia Mass Choir. That is monumental. But they actually had said, no, it was a symbol of unity. Ooh. And it's a very rare thing. Yeah. So that to me was. Oh, one I of got the most... tears in my eyes right now. That just makes me. Like, oh. <laughs> it was awesome. And that was like 20 years ago. So it was amazing. So that, that definitely was a highlight in, in ministry. Absolutely. Yay. Now, that's. See, uh, that's much huger than my thing. I'm, I, when I think of uh, like people being. Cross-cultural. I, I had an experience one time at a church that I was going to in downtown LA, and I was this lovely little pale girl, um, and, and just kind of worship with them. And we just had like it was like a uh, what is it? It was a oh I can't even think of the right term. It was a, a, a Pentecostal church. Oh. Okay, okay. And um, we're all just kind of singing, and we're all just worshiping God, and I'm I'm just having fun with Jesus and the pastor um, comes up as I'm singing, as my eyes are closed, she decides that I have a good voice or whatever. And she put me on mic and <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> but the Georgia job was definitely, yeah, you've ooh, baby. <laughs> it was quite the experience. And I think one of my other favorite things about that, that I'll never forget was, I mean, bless these, you know, there was a few high schooler boys and I remember being at the end of the platform and oh, this is the strange thing I've ever seen in my life in a ministry setting. They had painted letters on their chest of my name. What? It was like M A N. Yes, and brought me flowers. I'm like, this, oh this my is the way to do church goodness. right here. I, I, I really didn't know what to think, but I think they were trying to bless me. <laughs> it was a, it was unforgettable moments and Whatever you want, Lord. <laughs> Right, exactly. I'm like, okay, God, if yeah, okay, don't know what to do with that, but uh, God bless you, brothers, and yeah, it was awesome. Oh my (laughs) goodness, we laughed so hard. It seems like many, many artists um, challenge themselves, and they keep challenging themselves, and they keep challenging themselves, and and they come up with some amazing stuff. I I love just the diversity of things you've done over the years. I love. I love hearing what Toby Mac is working on. I love hearing, uh, you know, people who in a normal musical world probably would just replay their old stuff, but are challenging themselves to do more and more and better and better. Right. I think there's a balance. I think, and I totally agree with you, Paula, that, you know, I think we need to celebrate what's in the past, just like, you know, for singing hymns or celebrating what God has done in the past through musicians, because we have to remember that music of that time was very popular. You know, hymns, I mean, they were basically bar melodies, melodies played in the bar setting, taken and and basically put words, Christian words, 
um, gospel centered words to it. And so that was like yeah. scandalous, you know, woo, you know, yeah. and, and we think now, oh, hymns are so conservative, you know, but really, right, but no, they weren't at the time. Right? right. And so, and then we celebrate what God is doing today and what he will do. And I think as a worship leader, we have to have that constant perspective. We need to be main teachable and we need to grow. We need to learn from one another. And that means exposing ourselves to all ages, being a mentor, being mentored. We never stop growing. So I think exactly what you said, that it's important to to do those things. That's something I see in you a lot. I see you, uh, you get to know a lot of different worship leaders. You, you know, a lot of various artists from, I think around the world, right? Yes. Um, and, uh, it's just, I, whenever I see you like talking about somebody, you know, their music. I mean, you are a, you are a fan of, of music and what people put out, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now you've been you've been happily married for how long now? It has been thirteen and a half years. Oh goodness! And you guys have two gorgeous girls, right? Yes, ma'am. And what are their names? Bridget, she is nine, and Brielle is five. Okay. Now you you just recently came out with your latest album. Is that called an album now? It's called an album now, right? Oh, it's yes. No matter (laughs) whatever comes out, digital or whatever, it's always called an album. It's just, it's that vintage (laughs) vibe. And, and tell me about, tell me about some of the songs in your album and, uh, and just where you were as you were getting those put together. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, some of the songs that were written, most of them are written by uh, my favorite co-writer, and I, her name is Brittany Bookout. Um, we've known oh, each other Brittany, for years. Brittany, she's gorgeous and awesome and, and talented <laughs> in her own right. Absolutely. We just have this amazing chemistry, and um, not just as writers, but as friends, and it just, God always blesses our time together, so I'm thankful for her. And then actually on the album, a couple songs were written by my daughters and I. Yes, I know they're very young, but we wanted to write songs that people could remember. And, you know, especially with scriptural content, pointing to the Lord, pointing to the Holy Spirit. And so I just brought them in the office one day and Bridget is more of a lyricist and Brielle is more of a melodic writer. And we just kind of came up with some songs. I also have written that song with um, a buddy of mine, uh, Steve Seiler, who was my mentor since I was a teenager. Um, so it was amazing to put this project together. What's ironic is that, um, and I think we're going to talk a little about this too, yes, but sure. the, ti- <laughs> the timing of the album was really as a result of what I was going through. I had written these songs. Some of these songs had been written a couple years ago, mm. but as you could imagine, and all your mommies out there, there are a bit few other important priorities in your life that you got to get to. And there's also, you know, the, when you do an album, people always say, Oh gosh, you're doing an album. It's almost like preparing to buy a car. So it right, time, educate me on that. Cause I, I've never prepared an album. <laughs> How is it like buying a car? <laughs> it is okay. If you were saving up for a car, you can imagine how much that would be. And so, you know, basically it's, you know, from any used car to brand new, I would say my album is, is like a used car. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so we were, you know, it takes time to save. And, you know, it's unfortunate. I think that sometimes artists feel, especially like around my age, I'm 40 and proud of it, baby. Yes. And um, you're a gorgeous <laughs> 40, by the way. I saw your pictures recently and I would not assume you were 40. <laughs> That's my mom. She, she gave me her good genes. <laughs> but um thank you for that uh but anywho like with you know staying for i think so many times the artists that are kind of at this age that are moms no matter what age your kids are you know they're thinking oh, they're especially social media you see people pumping out music like nothing else and i think the best thing to do is rather than to compare and say oh my gosh they're doing that you know, or I'm so far behind is to just take one step at a time. So for a couple of years, the one step was saving money. And, Mm -hmm. um, and I would record songs one at a time. 
And no matter how long it took me, I just knew the end result would be an album. It's just when it would be released. And so, you know, and I firmly believe, I do not believe in going into debt over investing in your gift. And that, I know there may be different views on that and opening businesses and whatnot, but I'm, I'm specifically talking about saving for an album here. The, okay, so there that's, is nothing, that's something an yeah. artist has to do. An artist has to put aside the money, has yeah. to prep for and and, yeah. and then to create the album. I think I don't think a lot of people know that. Right, yeah, because I'm an independent artist. I'm not signed. So I feel called to this and I feel that God put the responsibility upon me that um, the Bible speaks clearly about this, that before we go ahead and jump into something, we need to put our plans into order mm-hmm. and walk through it. And there's so much enjoyment on the other side because you could just like give stuff away. You could like bless people. You're not just like, I got to sell this record. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to make my money back. Like you're thinking like, Oh, cool. Like I can just like hand this stuff out without even flinching. It's, it's the total like reaping and sowing experience that the Bible speaks about. So I highly encourage artists to save mm. and do rather than being like, Oh my gosh, I need it right now. Because it's, it's that delayed gratification that comes, you know, and, and you're like, Oh, I'm so glad that I did it that way as opposed to rushing. And then you're paying on the back end and you're always worried about making the money back where for me, it's like, Oh yay, you know, it's just, you've saved up, you're good. Release, see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Just like anything. Yeah. Okay, cool. And now this album, it's, it's, it's called, and I, I've mixed up the words, so please forgive me, but it's called hold my everything, right? Correct. Now, what does that mean? Where does that, what does that expression mean? Hold my everything. (laughs) Oh, that's good stuff. Um, This song was the very last song written on the album. And the reason is because it was my prayer over the last uh, 10 months specifically, although it should be our prayer every day for Jesus to hold our everything, meaning everything that we are, everything that we love, everything that we hold dear. Um, and so for us as a family, last November, our daughter was diagnosed with a brain tumor and um, it was uh, deemed uh, malignant. And so we walked through cancer and chemo and radiation and all the above. And one of my deepest prayers over my daughter, Bridget, was that God would just hold her. One, Mm -hmm. for healing, yes, but that she, you know, our children, you know, are are everything. Um, We love them. We care for them. We invest in them. And we want to see them grow into mature followers of Christ. And I wanted to see that for Bridget. And... But in order to do that, in order for Jesus to hold everything, that meant I had to allow him to hold everything. And so I had to take my hands off. And I'm I'm not saying I'm perfect at this or that I've mastered it, but I had to make that choice for him to intercede and to hold. See, that's... Um, And that means... Yeah, go ahead. It's okay. I was just thinking that um, as, as, as moms the idea that your daughter was diagnosed and with brain cancer. Um, I think, I think for many people, a first response would probably be, be anger. It would probably be um, disappointment in God. You know, how did you, how did you get from the initial, Hey, your daughter has cancer to hold my everything. (laughs) <laughs> Great question. And um, I think when you were talking about people being angry or disappointed in God, I think, you know, those are very real emotions and God did not program us as robots to not feel anything. So hear me out when I say this. I believe it has everything to do with where you currently are in your relationship with Christ. So finding out this information, let's say you're far from God. He is not near to you. Uh, For some reason, you are not seeking his face as actively. Maybe you're in a, I don't know, an unhealthy church environment or, you know, just in an unhealthy environment overall. 
And I, I feel that sometimes that it's the place where we're at that helps shape how we're going to react to something. Mm. Um, whether that be like, you know, in our time alone with God or even just, you know, where we're at, maybe we're just too busy to spend time with it. It happens. But for me, at this point in my life, I was growing immensely in the word. I was growing immensely with alongside my church body. Um, I was in a healthy place mentally. Um, and so, and that doesn't always happen, but I really truly believe God allowed some really hard things a couple years earlier for me to get out of and enter into a season of goodness to prepare my heart for the news. So, so wait, so the uh, so he, difficult he, stuff in the past, yeah, and and trusting God with those difficult things helped you yes. to be able to trust Him with this difficult thing. Correct. So okay. it's seeing seeing God's faithfulness in past things. That is what allowed me to see His faithfulness in these things. And so, yes, was I angry, disappointed at God? No, not ever once. That's not interesting. Ever once. And I'm, I'm not saying that to make myself sound better. And I'm not, please know, and, and for anyone listening, that is not to elevate myself in any way. That confidence can only come from the Holy Spirit and the assurance he gives us and the promises. But I really felt like I had believed in the Lord, Paula, since I was three years old. I entrusted my life to him. I gave, I accepted him into my heart. And I felt at that moment when I heard the news about Bridget, that if I did not hold on to those truths and believe, not just believe in God, but believe God, then my whole faith was an absolute wash. Hmm. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, Satan, he didn't like that. He did not like that. Uh, The enemy hates it when we trust God fully. And so he's going to come at you with different perspectives and arrows to pull you away from him as much as he can. But I just, my husband and I, we just looked at each other and we said, this is what we are going to do. We are going to do exactly what the Bible says, which is to not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in prayer, have thanksgiving, be grateful, to uh, be joyful in affliction, to... Ooh, that's a tough one, isn't it? It is. Very hard. Very hard. However, I find it much harder to have control and want control over everything than to rest in his hands. Interesting. Yeah, it's true. Actually, it's, it's much easier. In, in, people say, no, it's harder because we don't see. But, you know, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. That's what it tells us in Hebrews. And so you so, had to let go of a sense of control and be trusting. Right. And we were never angry at God because we considered it an assignment. We considered it an assignment. Like, okay, God, you're going to use... We really firmly believe that when God said, who's going to carry out my message of hope and light to the world, that he looked down and he saw a nine-year-old girl and said, that's the one. And some people would say that is the worst thing you could ever say because how would you ever want a child to carry cancer? Right. It's not that I want that. It's no, that yeah. I trust to God who who said, this is a child that can handle it. Mm-hmm. And she will reflect my life and my love to the world. Oh, And he, yeah, he spoke that to our hearts. We knew that. And um, obviously we can go into prayer and prayer warriors and just the way the body of Christ encouraged us. Well, yeah, you had a whole group um, and, of people and, and I love, what, what is the, what's the website you guys were on where you were sharing your story? I'm forgetting the name of it. Um, oh, um, the Caring Bridge. Caring Bridge, yeah. And you had like a whole yeah. whole group of people. You invited people in and you said, will you please pray for our daughter? Will you please pray for us? And you, yeah. you, were, you were not yeah. trying to hide. You were not trying to um, be too proud to accept help or things like that. You were, you were just putting it out there saying, this is what's going on. We need your help. We need your prayers. Absolutely. Prayers was, was the thing we wanted the most because... We knew that God would provide for us. Like that was never a question. Um, people were just extremely generous in the way they loved us through that season. But the prayers were the most, I mean, it would, it's amazing. I had like speed dial, like if something, hey, we were told things, really hard things. And we'd be, we just reach out to a prayer. I had women 
that I could call upon literally a day before and ask them to fast and pray with me. Will you fast and pray with me tomorrow? And they were like, yes. So that's awesome. It wasn't like, that's, oh, tomorrow's not a good day for me. So that, to me, you that's know, a reason like, to, to spend time with, I think we don't understand why, why it's important to have community in as a believer, because we say, Hey, I can read the Bible on my own. Hey, I can pray on my own. I don't, I don't need to go to church. I don't need to hang out with all those people or spend time in this meeting or that meeting. And yet at the same time, having those times, having those people means that when something like this happens, they're there. They know you. They can they can come alongside you, and they want to. Right. Oh, it's so important. We do isolate ourselves, and we're very independent. However, we that was not even an option for us. Mm-hmm. Not even close. It was like, no, nope. we have to reach out. And not just the people that have fought this battle before, because that's great, too. But we need to reach out to those who firmly believe in the power and the healing of Jesus Christ. And we, you know, and and it's not like Paula, like we were able to to witness and be a testimony of that power to people that don't know him in our family and our friends. How can you, you know, people want to know how did you ever get through that? How do you, how do you even, and and it, you know, I thought the same thing because, you know, six months earlier, a dear friend of mine, their son was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma. And I just wept and cried and yes. just fell apart. And I'll tell you what, like I thought in my mind, oh dear Lord, please don't ever let that happen to me. Cause I don't know what I would do. Right. And six months later, for his purposes alone, it happened. And you know what? It was like, all right, here we go. Hmm. I'm either going to hold your hand or I'm going to take control. And I think as moms, I am totally guilty of this, especially, you know, in the past, a little bit better at it now, but still working on it. But I want, I want the control, but really there's no peace in having control. Yeah, There's no peace. There's not because then everything's on you. And right. as messed up as we all know we are when we really dig down deep, um, we we're, we don't, it's stressful. It's, it's trying to be the end all be all. And that's not who we were designed to be. No. Hey, Maddie, yeah, I, I, w- I want to talk with you more about this and our time is almost up. And so what I want to do is have you come back and I'm good. We're going to record again. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and close this out and say, I'm um, thank you. Please hold on. Okay. Thank you so much yes, for being here. Mamas, as you can tell, there's much more to Mandy's story. So you're going to have to wait till next week to hear the rest of it. But oh my goodness, she's so honest. She's so generous with what's really happening in her life. And so she's going to walk us through what it was like for them and how they dealt with different stages of discovering this. And, and there are many different elements that come into play when you are discovering that somebody in your family has cancer. So please come back next week and listen to Mandy's continued story. I just want to encourage you, if you enjoyed this podcast, podcast please leave a rating and feel free to subscribe. We'd love to have more subscribers on uh, iTunes or wherever so that you can hear it because I, I know when I subscribe, it just saves me time. I can find the things that I subscribe to really quick and bam, I can listen whenever I want. So I, I want to encourage you to do that. I've enjoyed this time we have together. I know you have plenty of things to do and many options. So thank you for listening. Remember, love is patient, love is kind, and that is never more real than in our families. God bless you and have a great week.